Well, good evening and welcome to this hybrid Eastern Area Committee on Tuesday, 28th of February 2023. And this is going to be the last one of this municipal year and of our four year term. I would like firstly to thank G uh, Councillor Saunders and Councillor Valentine for stepping in to the chair uh, when I wasn't here. Can I ask uh, any members or officers in physical attendance with an electronic device to mute it to avoid feedback? And any remote participants to keep their camera and microphone off unless you wish to speak, as this can affect the quality of the meeting. The meeting is being live webcast and recording stays on the councillors, council's website. We are using remote video conference equipment, so for any speakers uh, to be picked up by the camera, they'd need to come further from the room, which I think you have anyway, um, but it can pick up the audio from further away. So welcome members and everyone uh, to this hybrid Eastern Area Committee for visiting members and members of the public uh, attending here and remotely. I wish to provide you that the following officers are in attendance from Swellborough Council and that is Communications and Policy Manager Peter Suckley mm -hmm. and Policy and Engagement Officer Janet Dart. Well, I'd like to thank all the hard work and support she's given me for my time as the chair. I would now like to go around the table and ask the committee members to introduce themselves. Uh, so, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Councillor Lloyd. I'm one of the Kennedy board members. I'm Carol Jackson, the Land Information Officer. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Saunders, and Ward Member. I'm Tim Valentine, board of the uh, Councillor Mike Martin, Kevin Lynch. Mike Henderson from the Flowery Mike. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Chair. I'll just it. Oh, that's what it goes by by me. Okay, sorry. I apologise. Okay. We'll make sure it's minted. Uh, Hannah Pagan, I'll be more. Uh, Alistair Gould, Dalton Court. I'd like to also welcome the following who are in attendance. Um, ben Sherrard for KCC regarding the community services consultation. He's virtual, I think. Yes. I'm afraid it's Zoe Galvin from KCC instead of Ben Sherrard. Oh. We wondered who you were. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, I don't think Anthony Hook, Council Hook is here. No. Lee Souter from Faversham Strike Force, thank you for coming. Alan Thorne from Faversham Community Build, and the nominated representatives of the Parish and Town Council. I know that we've got Councillor Deb Ferrell here from Org. Have we got any other? We've got Louise Barron from Faversham Town Council. Adrian, can't remember your surname. From Council Town Council, and is there anybody else? Oh, Kevin Fraser, who is um, online. I'd just like to remind you that anyone who wished to speak, you um, will be asked to speak in turn. Could you speak, state your name and the organisation you represent? And could anyone attending remotely please mute their microphone until they speak and indicate in the IM if they wish to speak. Any member of the public that uses the IM inappropriately will be removed from the meeting. Agenda item one is the emergency evacuation procedure. Please be aware of the evacuation procedures to follow in the event of an emergency. There's no scheduled test of the fire alarm during the meeting. But if the alarm does sound, please leave the building quickly without collecting any of your possessions using the door signs 
um, as fire escape and assemble outside where directed. Await instructions before re-entering the building and should anyone require assistance in evacuating the building, please could you make Spellborough Council officers aware now that suitable arrangements can be made in the event of emergency. Is everyone okay? Agenda item two is for apologies, Janet. Yes, we've got apologies from Councillor Eddie Thomas and also Councillor Rich Lehman has served, uh, sent his apologies. Oh, um, thank you very much. Thank you. And also in attendance is the Chief Exec, Lucy uh, Reid. General item three, declarations of interest. Is there anyone who'd like to declare any declarations of interest? Agenda item four is the minute. Do you all agree the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of December, minute numbers 533 to 543 is a true record? Great. That's fine, thank you. Agenda item five is the Kent County Council's Community Services Consultation. Ben Sherrod is in attendance virtually. Oh, yes, yeah, Zoe. That'll be me, Zoe Galvin. Oh, I'll amend that, sorry. Um, no problem. And she will give a short presentation and be able to answer questions and note any comments. Kent County Council have launched a consultation. So I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. No, fabulous. You're quite right. We have launched a consultation. We launched it on the 17th of January. Um, and it's about five of our different services. We're inviting feedback up to the 26th of March um, to help us make the decisions. So um, I'll tell you just a bit about kind of how we've got to where we've got to so far, what those proposals mean for Swale, um, and then open up to your comments um, and also any questions that you might have. So the services that we're talking about are our community services for adults with a learning disability. It's about our adult education offering through community learning and skills. It's about our gateway service and it's about our open access services. So that's our children's centres and our youth hubs, as well as our public health services for um, for children. So we've decided to talk to the public and talk to partners about all five of these services at the same time because there's a lot of synergies between these services and we know that often residents will be accessing more than one of them across their household or their families. So all three of these services we already have kind of history of delivering in three different ways. So one of those is through permanent buildings that we either own or lease where we've got that kind of permanent presence. Through your outreach where we'll go into different community venues um, and be there for a shorter amount of time kind of targeting areas of need um, but also delivering online so it's essentially this consultation is about shifting the balance um, about how we deliver those services um, and having a holistic conversation giving us opportunities to bring services together to share spaces because we've had feedback from residents in the past that this would make sense to them so in terms of some of the drivers um, one of the main drivers is financial so there's two elements to that. Firstly, it's about kind of the size of our estate and the cost to maintain that. Um, and there's about 200 buildings in scope of this proposal. Um, and if we were to keep all of them, the backlog of maintenance for the next 10 years is about 42 million pounds. So that would be a lot of money to find. We want to make sure that where we have those physical buildings, they're really delivering value for residents. But it's also about delivering a balanced budget, so more the shorter term. I'm sure you've all noticed kind of energy bills creeping up and obviously we're we're not um, immune to that either um, and that rising cost. So it's really important those services deliver value and that they're in the right places delivering the right services. The second driver is around our carbon ambitions to um, be net zero across our operational estate by 2030. Now we know that obviously we can't just get rid of all of the, the carbon that exists, um, but by knowing which buildings are going to be really important to our future, we will be able to prioritise that investment into those buildings that we keep to make sure that they're really energy efficient um, and, and doing good for the, for the environment as well. 
Finally, and probably most importantly, um, we know some of these services are an absolute lifeline um, to some of our communities, some of our residents. So it's about ensuring that into the future we can keep delivering these services um, that obviously are very meaningful to people in our communities. So we thought about how we could go about this, having decided to do these five services together. Um, and we kind of decided that need was going to be the most important thing um, going forwards because that would map to kind of what that resident expectation was and resident need. So we could have looked at the most expensive buildings and tried to get rid of those, but we didn't think that would be appropriate. We could have got rid of the least carbon efficient buildings, but again, all of those approaches just didn't seem to make sense in terms of making sure that our services are in the place where they're most needed. So we have looked a lot at indices of multiple deprivation and built kind of like a huge data bank of different indicators, helping us to build up a profile at a ward level of every community in Kent. So some of that is just kind of um, deprivation levels. Some of that will be service data as well. Um, so what we know about existing service users, about academic attainment for some of our services, those children's services. Um, but then we've combined that with other kind of data sources telling us about the connectivity of particular wards. And that could be online or that could be through transport links. So which places might be able to access different channels of delivery, those three that I talked about at the beginning. And in some instances where we've seen usage data isn't high, do we need to build trust with the community where having a physical building expecting them to come to us just isn't working for us and actually outreach would be a better, better option. So we've applied that. Um, I mean, it's explained very simply in a few minutes, but it was months and months of going through, thinking about which data, what this was telling us, and then talking to all of those five services, putting their service insight into the mix as well to help us develop kind of the proposal to move forwards with the consultation. The result is that we're proposing to have fewer buildings overall um, and reinvesting some of the money that we would currently spend on services in buildings on delivering outreach instead. So in terms of what that means for Swale, um, we're proposing to have four community hubs. So building on the strength of the Sheppey Gateway, um, we're looking to also have community hubs at Faversham Library. Um, so adults with learning disabilities had already used this service alongside the library, but we're hoping to make that feel like a more permanent um, fixture for them as well as looking at the libraries in Sittingbourne and Queenborough and adapting those so that they can also have a family hub inside of them. So Family Hubs um, is another programme that's running at the council at the moment. You might have seen that we've been awarded up to £10 million from the Department of Education um, to improve that offer um, for, for children and young people. It's about bringing services together, working really closely with partners, um, as well as kind of having that integrated approach from 0 to 19. Um, or not uh, 25 with a with a special educational need. So we won't necessarily in the future have separate children's centres and youth hubs, but we'll be thinking more holistically about what those buildings can do for different ages um, and different parents as well. So um, we're looking to have that provision available through our libraries as well. We're proposing having four children's centres across Swale. So there'll be three of those in Sittingbourne. Um, so that's Merston, Milton Court and Wood Grove that we have identified um, to retain moving forwards, um, as well as uh, one in Faversham as well. We've also got commission provision um, on the Isle of Sheppey, um, which isn't part of this consultation because it's a commission service, but obviously is still providing um, valuable services on the island. So that does mean that there are four children's centres and a youth hub which we're proposing um, not to be using going forwards, where we think that other models of delivery um, would work better for those areas, or that the level of need just doesn't um, merit having a, a full-time a full building there. We're also looking to maintain um, kind of bespoke buildings for community learning and skills and adult education in both Sittingbourne and Sheppey um, and we're also looking to maintain Crawford House which is our bespoke provision for adults with a learning disability on the Isle of Sheppey as well. So alongside the physical delivery we've already started identifying places where we think outreach will be really necessary um, to kind of support communities that maybe haven't got physical provision anymore. Um, so, so far we've identified Abbey Ward and Queenborough and Halfway as being places where we might need to do some additional work. Um, but outreach is designed to be really flexible. We want to be responding to need, listening to partners um, and the kind of having the benefit of not having kind of fixed locations that we can respond much more um, flexibly, be more agile in where we deliver those services and how we reach people and communities. 
So as I said, the consultation is open till the 26th of March. Um, so I would kind of just ask for your support in, in reaching residents, helping them understand what this could mean for them and feeding back to us as well. Um, so we've got all of our consultation materials online. I can pop the links and everything in the chat later if that's helpful. Um, but also we're kind of taking feedback in other ways as well for communities. So there is um, a phone number that people can call if they need to leave us a voicemail, if they need kind of stuff posted out to them or they just need to have a chat about something. Um, we've also got our email address as well if, if the um, kind of the consultation questionnaire is proving challenging for people. Um, we've also tried to respond in times of having a shorter version for, for children and young people people as well and um, to make it a little bit more manageable because of, that's just the difficulty of talking about five services at the same time um, it's making sure that people have really understood it um, but yeah I would really welcome any support any kind of tips on how we could better reach communities we're already enacting some um, I guess suggestions advice that we've had so in terms of having events in Faversham to make sure that community is really reached that's something that we're already um, kind of looking to implement before we close the consultation um, and the same for the east of Sheffield as well um, over near beaches which is one of those sites that's proposed to close to make sure that we're really listening to those communities and taking on board their feedback before we make a decision we have left ourselves a good two months um, so after the consultation closes there's two months for us to look at the feedback and to adapt the proposals and change them there's also a really good opportunity during this time to think about how we work with different partners so if you've got ideas about what we could do differently kind of working in collaboration and um, we really welcome kind of those ideas and suggestions as well to help us on that journey before we make a decision as an authority um, but I'm going to stop there and kind of over to you either for comments um, or for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zoe. Uh, is anyone who'd like to ask some questions or make some comments? Councillor Paul, please. Just uh, one question. But when you say there'll be outreach uh, taking place, wh where will that actually take place? Is that going to be in people's homes or will you do sort of temporary um, events for, for, for the outreach. How does that actually work when, when there isn't somewhere for people to go to? So for most of our services that already deliver through outreach, it'll be through community centres, community halls. We could also be looking at kind of the rest of our library network to, to use that as outreach venues or other KCC venues. Um, in terms of the family hub offering, I think that's mostly where we're talking about seeing an increase in, in outreach activity. Um, that's actually something that we're hoping to design kind of and co-produce with current service users before we decide how that looks. But there's definitely scope for us to be hiring out community facilities to do that, bring it closer to home um, for families that have really complex needs that can involve home visit visits as well thinking particularly about those health visiting services where there are families in real need that they're struggling to get out then absolutely that would be something that they would prioritize um, so I think there's a whole host of things I was down in Dover today um, and they've got their kind of community bus as well so we could be thinking about that um, in terms of how we deliver that outreach but we wanted to leave that open that's one of the questions that we're asking in the consultation from residents from partners how could we make outreach work for you what's important about it is it the regularity of services and um, is it the location you know what is most important about that provision to help us design that I suppose as we move forwards um, so that is part of kind of the family hubs transformation which is just getting underway we should have the funding announced for that so um, but we want to make sure as we design that we know what those physical sites are going to be for those services so we know kind of where else we need to reach apologies not the most comprehensive answer in terms of what it will look like but hopefully that gives you some ideas about what it could be and um, kind of listening to that feedback from public um, and from partners as well did that answer your question councillor Bowen, please thank you chair um just looking on the county wide uh, image for, for a moment. In terms, I think you said there are, I think you said 42 buildings, certainly 40 plus, at the, at the part of this consultation. What's the, what do you think is the almost like the magic number that you're looking at after this consultation to reduce it to? And these part of the consultation is one of the considerations, actually, not only just from a monetary side, but actually considering what the take up and use of by residence is within the, within those areas. Thank yeah, you. so thank you for that. Um, so there's about 200 buildings in scope. 
um, of this program and we haven't got a number in mind about how many we want to um, we think we need to close and like I said we haven't been led by the finances at all we've really been led by that needs profile so that's what we'll be looking at through the consultation responses is kind of what we've suggested moving forwards going to meet the needs in the future um, rather than going how much money do we need to save what combination of buildings can we put in place to, to do that um, so that yeah there isn't that kind of um, number in place I suppose and what you'll see obviously I've talked you through Swale today each of the districts has got a very different profile because they've got very different needs so we particularly wanted to avoid a one-size-fits-all approach where we said right each district area or each number of people gets x amount of buildings and um, we really wanted to respond to what we know about those communities um, but absolutely we want to see high usage of our buildings we've got a lot of our buildings that are only open a day or two a week at the moment as well so we want to make sure that where we do have a building we are paying to maintain it that we're maximizing the usage of that um, and we have built usage figures into some of the thinking about which sites we keep and which ones we don't as well um, just again to see if we've got a need in a community but we know that people aren't coming to the centre um, maybe there's something that we need to do differently maybe outreach would be better for those is communicating under the skin of why it is that people might not be coming to to use those services that are available at the moment um, but that's where kind of it's really helpful to hear from local communities to understand different communities and their different nuances and um, which I know you guys will have fantastic insight into that which is why we're so keen to get your your input as part of the consultation thank you thank you uh, Councillor Whiting please uh, thank you Chair thanks, thanks um, for, for the presentation um, I'll, I'll start with the um, kind of the good news in a sense of the uh, residents that um, Lloyd and I represent in awe um, it's good to see that the advising wood uh, centre will be staying open and that um, will remain um, a local uh, local hub for those residents um, but we have thousands of residents who are living in Tenement Linstead um, who are miles from any of this provision um, and I and there are areas there where where need is is great and and it concerns me um, that enough thought is being given to the level of outreach is going to be required in places like um tenement Linstead, which lloyd and i represent as i say um, transport has become a, an even bigger issue now we have communities now that don't have any buses at all following the cuts that were made at the beginning of the um, beginning of the month or halfway through the month and so getting those people who need help getting them the help they need when they cannot serve themselves by getting to one of the uh, um, the brick buildings if you like is going to be a real concern uh, to them and, and certainly is to uh, to me and I know Lloyd uh, as the other board member in terms of needs to share those concerns Thank you for that. So, yeah, obviously, um, some some of the things that we're thinking about with particular areas and what their need profile is will be about how digitally enabled communities are as well. Um, I don't know the details of every ward off the top of my head, um, but that will have been in the, com the kind of the conversation for different places. Um, but what we would really appreciate is, um, I guess, a bit more detail on what that level of need is, kind of what you see when you're you're speaking to residents, what they need from those different services, which services it is that you think they're in most need of, and those those five different areas um, to help us understand what that need profile is um, but there's definitely that look at how we can reinvest the resources that are currently being spent in physical to make them more availability for outreach um, particularly for those rural areas because um, outreach to us it just seems like the best way to reach those communities for face-to-face -face, um, given the, the challenges across Kent's transport network um, is to make sure that kind of whatever happens with that commercial network we're able to respond and still reach families that need us Thank you. Councillor Jackson, please. Thank you, Zoe, for allowing me to speak. Um, I'm very disappointed by the proposal to close the St Mary's Charities Children's Centre. It is halving the provision we have for the young children in Faversham when there's a lot of new housing development around the town and many new families moving here with young children, giving children learning and development opportunities in their first few years is a massive effect in the way of investing in their futures. It's a real signal to miss that we feel that the public services are in, in KCC at the moment. The last time there was a threat to close the centre in Fabersham, there was a strong community campaign 
to keep it open. We succeeded and I would urge all local councillors to work together with parents and local community across any political divides to build the strongest possible campaign to keep it open now. Because I can go back and remember when the youth centre in Paddington was closed and we're still to this moment trying to have to provide provision, extra provision, to back up what KCC is providing to the town. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. There's anything? Do you want to comment on uh, Councillor Jackson or? Just, just to say, please do obviously respond to the consultation. Please do mobilise local residents so they understand and they can tell us what the impact of this will be on them. Um, we really want to reach a stage where we can make a decision on this in the summer because we haven't made any decisions yet with a full understanding about what this means to communities. Um, so, yeah, please, please do make every effort to, to speak to residents. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Saunders, please. Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about children's centres as as well, I, I might cast the lighting. I'm pleased to see that uh, the current proposal is to retain the Bison Bridge Centre. I think it's very well located, surrounded by um, the immediate communities that will suffer a lot from um, social deprivation. And uh, I think it uh, provides very good value. But I am, I'm like Councillor Jackson, I'm concerned about the proposal to. Um, get rid of the St Mary Charity um, Children's Centre. Um, it's clearly very well located in the centre of town, very accessible um, to large numbers of residents. There are huge numbers of residents within easy walking distance, and it's well placed for the public transport. Um, so I, I don't really understand the logic of it, apart from the fact that um, KCC is totally strapped for, for cash. The the, car, the net zero arguments do seem a bit confused. I can see there's a cost, um, carbon cost in retaining uh, premises, but the, there's a large carbon cost in uh, residents having to roam around the borough to uh, use other children's centres. And the the idea that um, residents in, in Faversham will go to somewhere like that. To, to make sense. So I, I am concerned about these proposals and I, I would like to propose that the committee, um, we, we ask the chair to uh, write to the KCC cabinet member outlining uh, our, our concerns about the closure of St Mary Charity and why we think that would be damaging you know, to the town. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want to comment on that at all? Yeah, I suppose just in terms of the, the need profile in Faversham, uh, we've identified obviously the, the, the Bising Wood area having a higher level of need, potentially from the data um, than we're seeing in Abbey Ward. But we are still seeing that level of need in Abbey Ward, where we think that outreach will be the best place to, to meet that need. Um, so it's not that we haven't identified that or that we're expecting families to travel to Merston or into Sittingbourne. Um, that's not what we're expecting. But also we're keen to hear from families, from residents where they do go um, and where it would be convenient for them to kind of to, to receive our services, I suppose, that would make it not an extra journey out um, compared to something else, somewhere else that they're going. Um, and yeah, so the, the carbon, again, I completely appreciate the view about kind of the, the travel. Again, we are trying to limit travel. We've got our digital options. We've got our outreach options to try and make sure that people are still receiving receiving those valuable services close to home um, and making sure that we can invest in, in the right buildings in terms of our carbon journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you speaking on, on this proposal or are you speaking on something completely different? About the past, the fact, second proposal. Right, okay. And, 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 on it. Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little concerned around outreach given that I'm in a ward that lacks community buildings. Um, we've seen that been trying to find additional polling places in what we can't get. Them. We have to close a school to be able to have a polling station in our ward. So the St Mary's Children's Centre actually serves the vast majority of the poorer area towards want of want a better phrase for it. Um, it also serves the area with the expansion of housing. I think I'm right in saying there's something like maybe 300 or 
like 800 new houses due to that, even towards the next couple of years. This comes at a time when KCC have already cut bus service subsidies, including the one that serves Lovey Room, which reaches Bolsingwood School from the other end of town, which is currently served by the St Mary's Children's Centre. It takes it away from an area which is relatively easy to get to from Bourbon and Dunkirk on the bus. At the moment, you get off, you want to go to St Mary's Children's Centre from Bourbon, you get off the bus at East Street. You've got to go all the way through town again and hope that you're getting at the right point. It's a very difficult pill to swallow. And I do understand um, the financial implications of running additional buildings, but outreach only works when you have the facilities to go and do the outreach in. Uh, as for digital services, we've seen in uh, parts and a lack of broadband infrastructure. And those where there is infrastructure there, it fails quite consistently. I think Council of Allentown, how many weeks was it that you were unable to access emails at home? It is ludicrous to think that centralisation of services is the best way to reach our populace, is the best way to give support to communities. Yes, you need to get out there and you need to be in the community that really needs it. My word, we all know how difficult it is. Those who really need the help don't go to a central hub. They need you to go to them. And by making it more difficult for them to go to a central hub, you may well lose it the same way that it was lost when the county council reduced the uh, peer support for breastfeeding a few years back. Uh, we saw how much that was able to save government at all levels over many years. Um, and again, you might say that this is a consultation, no decisions have been made yet. I'm pretty certain KCC's budget's passed that says that it's got to make cuts. It just always goes willy nilly, early doors, and says, we're not going to be specific about where they're going, it's just going to be cut in this particular area. Oh, good luck. We'll, we'll come up with the idea of where the funds are going to be cut from later on. I'm sorry, it is a bit of a stitch up, uh, as it always is on these. And of course, the town will unite and fight, and I'm sure the rural areas will unite and fight to try and keep hold of as many services as we possibly can in the areas where we need them, where they serve our populace that need these services. Thank you. Can I ask Tom that's um, attended virtually, can you turn your camera off, please? Thank you. Can I take Councillor uh, Perkins? Um, Questions before we go back to your proposal. Is that okay? So we can discuss it. Thanks. Thanks, Um Hello, Zoe again. Um, so I guess some of my questions, having worked at the centres, I worked at the centres for seven or eight years. I've got a reasonable level of knowledge about how they function. Um, what one of the things that I'm really concerned about and is the loss of that peer support um opportunities to kind of gather together as a group and learn from each other's experience but also to support people through that that kind of peer interaction is really really important and if you don't have that communal space for that to happen i worry that you can do all the outreach that you like but actually if you go and speak to someone in their home they're then left on their own without those social interactions that are really important in the first few years of parenting um, for example, when, when I was working as a play lead there, we would often pick up um, kind of family situations that were not quite optimal during those play sessions. So as a professional, you would be in there watching families interact with each other and realise that actually that might not be everything, everything might not be quite good at home. So you'd be able to have private conversations with that family separately. And I worry about those people kind of falling through the gaps a little bit because they're not being they're not being encouraged to come to something that might not necessarily tick the box that facing their need, but is very important in terms of um, their relationship with their family and their peers. And um, the second thing I'm, I'm worried about really is safeguarding in places like community halls and libraries and that kind of um that kind of outreach provision previously when uh, one of the children's centers on the island looked to move a uh, health visiting clinic into a community hall there was all sorts of concern about um the doors not having emergency stops on or um there being an appropriate kind of cctv that wasn't able to be turned off during those sessions um 
So I think that's something that cases you really need to look really carefully at. Um, as an example, if the library becomes a community hub, that the front doors of the library are automatic and go out onto quite what is quite a busy road um, with no availability to, to put an emergency stop on those doors. The same thing could be said for people who are escaping domestic violence. We would have used those doors to stop a perpetrator from, from entering the building should a woman come in or, well, should anyone come in try and, um, to try and avoid those situations. So um, I echo my colleagues in being incredibly disappointed to see um, where well, it feels a bit like deja vu really, it's exactly 10 years since this happened last time with KCC trying to close the centres. Um, but I think that there is a lot of additional things that come along with the, with the centres that that aren't accounted for within the questions for the consultation. Um, and I think it's very difficult in that respect to make really um, detailed responses. And I know the public have said, well, I feel like this, but I can't fit it into this this consultation question. So what would you what would you suggest? Would you suggest that those people that have slightly more detailed feedback to contact you separately? Is that is it best for them to email you? Like what would be what would be the best way around that? Thanks. Yes, the, the last question on the consultation document is if there's anything else that you want to tell us, please use that space to talk to us about it because um, we appreciate there might be things we just didn't think about that um, within that question or people might have got very specific points of view. Um, so you should be able to use that box for anything else that isn't captured in the other questions. Um, but equally, people are welcome to email us. Um, again, I'll, I'll pop the links in the chat so you've got our public facing email address as well. Um, and we've also got a phone number as well if people are struggling to to email in to get online then we can absolutely take voicemails from people as well and kind of hear their feedback um that way we're trying to be as open as possible for for communities to make sure that every voice is heard through this consultation um and i do, just thank you to, to both of you for those points that kind of local knowledge about kind of the the difficulties of finding community venues the difficulties in, and the safety elements of being in them um as well as kind of those peer support elements it's really good to hear that level of feedback and that's exactly the kind of thing that we want to hear from communities to help us make this decision um, about what's really important in terms of that service for you um, and in some cases in this one obviously why a physical kind of that permanent building at St Mary's is so important to you it's really good to, to hear and I'm absolutely recording that down from this meeting as well to take that to the team. Thank you so can we go back to your proposal please? Yeah, do you want me to repeat what yes, it is? Yes, yeah, so I I would propose that we write as a committee to the cabinet member at KCC uh, expressing our concern at the proposal to close St Mary Charity Children's Centre, explaining the damage that we feel this will cause to our local community. We've got a second then, Councillor Martin. And all those in favour? Thank you. Is there any other uh, questions you'd like um, question, Councillor Henderson? Sue, so, Zoe? Yeah, if I if I may, um, changing the subject, I agree everything has been said about the children's centre, but we are also talking here about adult education. And I have two quite separate interests in that. The first is my ward, I believe, is the third most deprived in Swale. It has a huge need for, um, for, for, for training, for retraining, for helping people with training subjects which will gain them employment. Um, uh, and additionally, uh, I uh, Help to run uh, a training company down in, uh, in Rochester and training the company in Swale, which makes me hugely conscious about the travel problems for training. A lot of training now can be online, but to be good training, it almost always needs a personal part to it and i'm conscious that adult education in Faversham has declined 
pretty much ever since I arrived here, which is 43 years ago, and it's looking like taking another dive under these proposals. So uh, I would certainly like to express my very substantial concern on, on the adult education front. Thank you. Thank you. So would you like to come back to that or? Yeah, just to reassure you, I suppose, in terms of adult education, we haven't actually identified any changes that we feel are necessary for adult education within the Swale District. Um, so we want to keep the permanent physical presence that we've got and outreach is something that that team already does. Um, I don't have the details here, but I can absolutely go back and find out what venues we have in the in the locality, what is going on, um, and maybe there's something about how we how we can advertise that. Um, or if you prefer, you can do that through the consultation as well and kind of state your opinions on what you think is necessary for your local area um, and help us to to bring that to the area if we can um, so hopefully that's reassuring yeah i'd certainly be happy to hear what the specific proposals are so I suppose that the thing with any outreach proposal is it isn't specific. It responds to demand and it responds to need because we don't want to be running courses that nobody's taking part in. Um, but equally, we need to make sure that there are courses if people have that that desire um, across a whole range and definitely ones that lead to employment as well. Um, so I can go back to the, the team and find out kind of a bit more information about what's been going on in the local area for you. Um, and then that will help you kind of respond into whether that's appropriate moving forwards as well. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Has anybody else got any comments or questions? Thank you so much for coming along this evening. So it's been really, really helpful. And I know as a committee, we will be um, taking part in the consultation. And I urge any parish and town councils and members of the public to also take part in this consultation. So thank you very much for coming and um, we will be in touch with you. Thanks for having me. I'll just pop the details in the chat of the, the email and the web address and everything and then I'll, I'll pop off. But thanks for having me. Thank you. The agenda item six is the Feversham Strike Force Football Club and we've got Lee Suter here who's going to talk to us about the work of his football club. Thank you, Chair. Chair, you? I think uh, Phil is going to be sharing. Okay, uh, evening everyone. Uh, thank you for the invite tonight. I'm going to run present. I believe we've got 10 minutes. So uh, I'll crack on. My name's Lee. I'm the club development officer at Parish and Strike Force Football Club. Uh, uh, I've been there for 23 years. That's why I've got this haircut because of all the stress of uh, progress in a football club. Uh, and tonight I'm going to talk you through uh, what we do, uh, some of our stats, uh, how well we're doing, but also some of the barriers we're facing as well and how we might be able to help with that. Yes, please. Well. OK, so I've already gone through that. So hopefully by the end of the presentation, you'll know who we are, you know the challenges and help with the next steps. Uh, the club was founded in 99 by that handsome man there, Gary Axford. Um, he formed the club for his, his three boys, uh, all grown up and have families now. So we're just uh, not shy of our 25 year anniversary to just show how relatively new we are, but um, how embedded we are in the community is, please. Um, we're currently, I don't know why that's not updated actually, because even though that is huge, we're actually currently on 654 members as of tonight. So we have membership from year R all the way to our senior men's and ladies teams. Uh, we have boys, girls, um, children with special educational needs and disabilities. Um, and if you think about it, 654 members is also 654 families. 654 mums, dads, nans, granddads are also involved and connected with our football club. So we'd like to think we're the largest sporting entity, maybe in Swale, we can't confirm that because the stats, but we are a huge entity now that affects so many lives. 
We've got 40 registered teams, so from under sevens all the way through to our women's teams and senior men's, we have uh, teams at every age groups. We have six uh, girls' teams. We have our women's teams that have been talking about um, if there's a room in into a team, we can provide that at whatever level it is, regardless of age, ability, or gender. Um, so we've actually got, as of tonight, 156 volunteers. So that is a small one. That's a decent sized army, really, isn't it? Uh, on who we got on the pitch, off the pitch, administrators, coaches, managers, welfare officers, treasurers, uh, chair, supporting volunteers and everything. We actually, if you mark it up on the number of hours they give each week, uh, max up with the minimum wage is around about £222,000 given in kind every year by our volunteers. That grows pretty much every day to try and sustain where we are. Uh, so our investment into the football pitches is 151k. It's spent on um, investing into the mound. Um, and that's how much we spend just to get people playing football. It's not all the other funds. So that's 151. Sorry, 51. Say again. <laughs> We've invested 178k uh, worth of capital into council-based facilities. So um, the mound where we play our football, we've invested nearly 200k of our own fundraising. Great. Not so our council. We've invested that money. But why is football so important? Look, we want to use football as just a vehicle. Regardless if you're into sport, not into sport, understand what sport actually stands for or don't. Football actually is the vehicle that's trying to improve people's lives and communities. It's the most popular sport on the globe, and we're just using it as a vehicle to change lives. So that is through uh, tackling inequalities, so working with social economic groups, low social economic groups, Families who are um, maybe struggling financially, so we offer exemptions, we offer um, discounted rates, we actually only charge £16 a month, that's how much we charge, and if you think about, we might have four training sessions or four matches every month, it works out £2 an activity. Don't think there's pretty much you can do in that world now for two pounds. I certainly can't do swimming, go to cinema, go bowling, or pretty much do any other sport for that. Our activities across the year work out about two pounds per month. Uh, so I think Google to probably stitch me up with this, Janet. Um, so since February 2021, as of today, we've had 801 expressions of interest. Every time I blink, there is another expression of interest sitting in my inbox. This is about right, because it's wrapped in capital and we're trying to break it back. Right, it's, it's, it's clearing around the 100 mark at the moment. We have a hundred young people who have said to mum or dad, I want to play football, I want to be active, and I want to be with my mates. I want to be social. I want to be out and about. Because of the lack of investment in pitches and facilities in this town, we have almost 100 young people on waiting lists. So if you scale that up, that might be 100 people who don't get active through for football, so might not use a swimming ball, actually might not go to the Christmas light switch on because they've got no connection with the, the town. Might actually want now they've been almost put on the sideline, don't want to be involved with their community. Uh, we forecast if we was uh, had the right pitches and facilities, we'd have five new teams every season. Five new teams ready to go. We've got the infrastructure, we've got the policies and procedures, we've got the safeguarding and welfare in place. We're ready to go. We just simply can't do it because we haven't got the pitches and facilities in the town. There's been zero new football facilities in Faversham for the last 10 years. The only facilities that have been developed is the Abbey School 3G 
and the artificial pitch at King George's playing fields. They're the only two new football additions that support not only football, but the multi-sport agenda as well. Uh, if you go to 25 years of the club, pretty much we've had no investment into facilities, no new pitching facilities in the last 25 years provided by Swalbro Council. But to sustain and grow, we need full size three big pitches. That's the only way we can grow because we need to offer uh, blood league training uh, in the week and matches. And the only way we do that is through artificial vision. So, as I've already talked about, what we could do for our facility, actually, what we do do, we've got uh, more refugees than ever as part of our membership. So we're integrating within the community. Uh, we're providing in uh, employment skills. So then volunteers are developing their experience. We have a number of young volunteers who referee with us as well, transferable skills. We run antisocial behaviors. We run walking football. We run turn up and play. We run special education needs and disabilities sessions as well. So we do everything. If there's a route into sport that someone wants to do it, we can offer that. I'm time, Chair. You're nearly there, that's basically it. Yeah, yeah, we're not there. So what next? Look, I'm at the point where I can't keep trying to influence people. I can't keep having this conversation of saying, look what we could do. Look where we could go. Look what we could be as a community. I can't do it. Swalborough Council has broken my spirit and broken my heart. And that's not for dramatisation. That is genuine. I can't do this anymore. Because it breaks my heart that we've got 100 young people wanting to be active and we can't do it. Not for our wants or willing. Just can't do it. I can't continue to have conversations with green spaces, open spaces, uh, councillors, MPs, housing developers, other sports. I can't do it. We're at the point where we can just about sustain what we're doing. But we continue to provide as much as we can for the community whenever we can. Thank you. Has anyone got any questions or wants to know anything that? Mr. Sid just said, Councillor Whiting. I, I, I think I made, um, I'm sorry, I made such huge admiration for what uh, the club does, what Lee has and his colleagues do. I think I asked him my sin for my son's football club for 10 years. I just raised his money getting a picture cut. All the other stuff that goes on, the volunteers you need, it's an enormously um, uh, tiring job. <laughs> and it's going on for 25 years. Um, bashing off often is paying a telling us to bring more by the sounds of it. I just my hands off to it. I do think there's more that we can do, and I do think that we can um you know, developers are willing to put one of six money into the provision of things that we as a council think are important. Um, I know the county council may say it wants this or somebody else may say it wants that, but if the council thinks it's important to build a 3G pitch, we can take one of the six money from developers to build a 3G pitch. We can do it. And it's, it's it's shameful in a sense that we haven't done that in the past. So I just think moving forward, I can't offer you any solace on one one back bench really. But I would hope that the administration and the officers, and we have the chief exec here uh, this evening, and I, I do hope the officers and others will take into consideration uh, the needs of this club and others that have waiting lists of young people who want to participate in sport. And I think one of the greatest legacies for, for the club I used to be is that those lads are all still friends with each other. They've become each other's best men. You know, they've gone to, they've gone to each other's children's whistlings um, and they all look out for each other. And I think that's the thing that we are risking here if we don't support clubs um, like the like likes of the So, more power to you. Thank you. That's fine. Uh, thank you, Chair. And thank you, Lee. Um, Frankly, I think that was one of the best short presentations we've actually had. Uh, I thought that was an excellent, uh, engaging and captivating. We had chats earlier, many, many moons ago, we've got the referees since. 
Well, we'll see anyway. Um, and you are absolutely correct in the that football is more than just a thing you know, a ball around a football pitch. In terms of personal development, the mental health of people, the physical health of people are uh, two huge things that football helps address. Um, man, the phrase man management, personal management, team skills, um, cooperation, planning, coordinating skills, all of this comes from kicking a ball around the football pitch. So we shouldn't underestimate it. And we want to build a community that's actually a community that's sharing and caring with each other. Then this is the sort of place where we should be starting, because if we don't, then we're going to have a, a generation that's going to be so conservative, uh, not getting that, not getting active, which will then have an impact on, on future health, but then on future generations, because they won't then have their children going out and taking part in these games because they didn't experience it themselves. Um, I would love to see more activity, more pitches of any sport, but I football is, a, is an obvious one around around the borough. And if you've got enough people to have, I think it's like five, potentially five or six different teams a year, well done, you guys. And shame on any authority if that was replicated around. That couldn't help with that. Because we're missing a trick if we don't. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to make a comment, ask a question? Councillor Perkins. Thanks. Um, so the community committee said that like one in five kids in Faversham is like is the thing which like force at the moment, which is like that's a very strong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, I think it's that was massive. So like fair play. Um, I guess. It's, it's really challenging to um, to discuss, you know, how much everyone would love to have more uh, provision for young people. Of course, everybody would. Um, the the financial situation that local government is in is appalling at the moment. We're very close to, you know, being a local authority that is just funded enough by the government to pay for the bins and for the statutory stuff that we have to pay for, um, let alone. Um, additional things. I agree that there is a place for pushing developers on that 100% to look at what they can do with, with their um, open spaces and with 106. Um, but I just thought it was really important to put put it into context where financially local government is. Um, that it's the reduction in central government funding to local government has continued year on year for many years and we're at a point now where it's pretty chronic. Um, so I just wanted to I just wanted to add that to the conversation. It's not an excuse. It's something that we it's 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 one of those things where it's not an excuse. It's a reality. And we have to use other ways to potentially look at providing services to the kids other than being able to give direct grants because there's just not the money there. And we've already seen last month that the pools had their their um, grant funding cut. So we need to really be creative, I guess. Um, and look for other ways that we can try and get the best results that we can. But I just wanted to add that that important context. Can I do? Sorry, I suppose the other thing that we've had conversations is the where. Yeah. So there is the money thing, but we sat in my office and tried to think of where we could have a 3G pitch. And between us, we didn't get other than the QE. We didn't. There wasn't a. Oh yeah, we could use that piece of at last we could use that so that is the other issue is there are two issues there is and we have looked and some of the 106s that we've got we talked about um we talked about 106 uh the way they're set up are quite complex it's not that we can't change them it's, it's quite challenging to change them and i think i do think that is a possibility but then it's the way it's the where can you have, and I went to Abbey School and I've spoken to the head about uh, strike force and I've said, you know, you've got to let them strike force use your pitches and they're saying to me, we had them resurface, so strike force, but they need to be paid to use because it costs them. So I think there are a number of issues that have got to be, you know, the where, 
that the you currently play at the school, don't you? Everywhere. Yeah, that's right. So it's not even that we can say, oh, you know, you've got the other school everywhere that there is land currently to play. So the issue is that even if we can pull, as Councillor Whiting said, we can push developers and pull the money together. Where would it go? What is the, the piece of land? And, and I think that's another piece of work that is really challenging. And if there are landowners that are saying, absolutely, we are really happy to give you, gift you the land to do that, that would be great. But the council, all the council's green spaces, you currently play football. So unless you go you know, to it's, you know, and you're going out to Faversham or, or you know, the other way, um, on a grainy, whatever, it, it is that thing about where is the place that you can expand to. Mm, thank you. Can I just respond? Yeah, uh, can you be quick because we've obviously gone over after. Yeah, yeah, sure. We've got someone else. So, the rest of the meeting. No, I work in, I work with local governments every day. I work for the largest sporting charity in the country, so I know it. I live and breathe what local government is going through. Mm. But let's not forget the 106 agreement for the Love Lane development is 62,000 pounds that's been sat in Swarborough Council's accounts. Let's not forget 52,000 pounds was spent on changing facilities at Faversham Reg under the heading increase in formal, uh, formal capacity of sport at Faversham Reg. That doesn't work. Changing room refurbishment doesn't increase capacity. We've already agreed with the QE that they want to put 3G there. The football foundation is willing to invest. So it's all there lined up. But I can't be the one driving it anymore. We need the want of everyone. That's where it is. Thank you very much. I think you've come in this evening. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure you have got the support of everybody here. And uh, Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. I'm going now. Now we can stay for the rest. Thanks. Well, the agenda item number seven is about the um, Faversham Community Boat Build, and we've got Alan Thorne who's going to talk about the work of the Faversham Community Boat Build. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's right, I'll look slightly. And what happened? Oh, did you do? Okay. Uh, well, good evening. Uh, thank you, Chair, for inviting me to, uh, uh, to come along. Uh, I thought these talk was really inspiring. It's really inspiring because it's about community and people. And uh, uh, I, I must say, I've got a bit of club envy, uh, <laughs> but you know, they've been going longer. Uh, my name is Alan Thorne, um, which I, I'm a boat builder and, and other things, but I've been um, in Faversham since 96, and uh, my boy's been involved in football, as Tilly was talking about, and um, uh, from Davington and so on. Um, I've worked uh, with a long time unemployed. Uh, uh, from the time I moved my workshop to uh, the Purified Building in Marston's car park. Um, and then five years ago, I discovered uh, something that uh, really switched people on, was building boats together. And uh, through, a, a, I invited people to come and we built the first boat. And then three years ago, just at the beginning of 2020, just before lockdown, uh, we started uh, this new uh, uh, project which we we didn't invent it it's a big thing in scotland and in ireland uh, and around the world it's international now uh, with world championships and everything which we've actually been to uh, last year um, and it's really affecting communities big time uh, just like the football uh, we're we're attracting all ages and so on um, so um that one is it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let's go. <laughs> this is the view from his house. Okay, and this is where we launch our, our 22 foot row most. Um, and Function uh, Town Council had, uh, has just today been completed today uh, some uh, uh, matting so that we don't get really muddy as we launch our boats. Um, um, so that's a really a good step and just a small way. Um, this is alongside Function uh, uh, Bridge and um, you know, you never, you never know. They might even install the lifting bridge at some point, it's but we don't got, we won't get there. Um, so that is uh, there's the bridge, and I want to say thank you for the support that you've given to us, from Swell Borough Council, and and um, councillors who've given their uh, their allocations to to support this work, because I think you see uh, what we can achieve, and I know there's some members, council members who here who. Uh, value the importance and the excitement of getting on the water. Yeah. So uh, I've sailed with this man here. Yeah, he <laughs> killed me. Anyway, it's all great fun. Um, so big thank you. Uh, we are becoming, I think, a centre of expertise. And uh, I'm actually bowled over. Uh, some uh, our members are here today. Um, uh, that we are, uh, we have have established a St Isles Skip community. St Isles Skip is the top part of this, um, and we are called Singport's Brewing Community Inter uh, Interest Company. Okay, so it's not for profit. We're here to serve the community, um, and um, the reason it's called Singport's is because, as you know, there's Singport's all around the southeast. Uh, and the furthest north is one in Brighton Sea, which is over on the dark side. But in this area, we want to expand. There's not much down here, but we're making a great start. Um, and we want to spread to the Medway. Uh, we want to go up the Thames. We want to go around the coast of Kent um, and do these, uh, this project because it is uh, so overwhelmingly good. Colnia, you will have heard of Colnia, that's well Marina. Uh, they've just built their first. Uh, and our skip. They're starting their second one. So we've been assisting them like we could assist other towns uh, with training and of course rural rivalry and sport because these this not only social rowing but competitive rowing as well. So we've built three. Um, we've, we've just finished in planking our fourth one um, and we could then build and supply boats to other towns that perhaps don't have the facilities like we have with the wonderful workshop. And my apologies uh, again to uh, the uh, uh, chair here who sat with me uh, in my workshop for an hour uh, a few weeks ago and uh, she was sitting next to a fire which she was saying I'm absolutely frozen. And I said and she should have said because we could have switched it on. <laughs> um, so We've had COVID, we've had separation, and you know we're coming out of that. And people need to have the interaction. Um, Fifteen percent on antidepressants, which may, if the function has a population of uh, thirty thousand, that's four and a half thousand people who come to people, to the members here um, to have their uh, antidepressants prescribed. You know, but this is changing lives. And I'm, some of the testimonials that I want to read out, read out briefly uh, will um, uh, show that. We have a neighborhood, another neighborhood plan in town, which is great. <laughs> but actually, we're, we're fulfilling lots of those aims and objectives already. Ramerson's you know, got lots of new neighbors, doesn't it? Yeah. And they're socially coming and getting involved. It's a way of getting to know people. Um, so we have a plan and it's happening. It's no good just having a plan. We're actually doing it. We need help to do that. We're making an impact. We're making it happen, but we need support to continue. I must say that uh, we've been bumping along on a shoestring and we've achieved a great deal. Um, and the volunteers now who are coming in, just like in the football strike force project, running on volunteers couldn't happen without them. Um, that's, um, but we, we need more support to become more established so that it happens long term. Um, 
I haven't got time to read all this there. If there's more testimonials there. This is Ben. He started only three years ago. He was from Abbey's Music Library School. He's there at Canterbury College. And he's now on work placement with us. Um, it inspired him. Uh, he's now doing uh, a carpentry at Canterbury College. He comes back and uh, I've got to read this bit. Uh, Alan is a good leader and mentor. <laughs> he is patient, funny and smart. <laughs> And feeds us cakes and biscuits. Okay, so you know it's all great fun, and uh, uh, there's all ages, and we're interacting. It's lovely to see the inter intergenerational uh, action. He comes on um, on a Thursday, and there's a retired carpenter comes in as well, and he learns. And there's a 19 year old, um, and uh, and another lad who come along, and they're all getting on. And you just don't see that in, in other settings. So it's really important. Um, so quickly, because I'm aware of the time, um, I've been, this is Libby who said, I've been involved in both boat building and rowing. So our motto is build a boat, row a boat. And uh, this community project has allowed me to enjoy the satisfaction of seeing a boat take shape whilst being part of the process and learning which tool to use, when, why, and how. Rowing a boat new and hand in making is also an amazing feeling. I love being part of a community that rows enthusiastically and is supportive of each other, uh, either building a row. Um, uh, the community rowing project, this is Carol said, um, <laughs> yesterday morning, it's not good, not this <laughs> Yesterday morning, I said we have uh, 90 people who are uh, who are rowers. Okay, we all got quite snappy. It's quite boring. We've got 90 rowers. We've got 35 builders uh, who come in for two hours a week with me, and we build build these boats. Um, and 611 Facebook people on our page, Township Community Boat Build. But Carol, I asked the group, would they send some testimonials in? I read this and I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the community rowing project changes lives. I see it amongst my fellow rowers, but my own experience has been life changing. The friendships made and physicality of rowing has lifted my depression like nothing else ever has. And referring to the age range, which is um, uh, children from the age of 12 to 87, um, we have that's our age range currently. How many other pastimes and sports can bring together? Uh, such a range of equal terms. It's amazing. Um, Chris said, I'm constantly meeting in the town, Bamsham, who say how much it means to them to see the creek being used and to watch our boats go by. We've got such a fantastic um, resource here in Bamsham, in the creek. And um, uh, rumour has it. The, the uh, swell borough council that came down here uh, a few years ago didn't realise that water came into Babsham. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But uh, there was a woman in her 50s who'd been in some terrible road accident 10 years earlier. She helped on the building too as well and struggled to walk. Took a seat in the boat um, and with some gentle assistance rode for one kilometre and having mastered the basics insisted on going out for another try. She was smiling and evidently very happy. Glad to say she's since been back several times. These are lovely boats, beautiful boats. They're traditional styles um, based on a fair off skip. They're seaworthy, coastal. Um, and so <laughs> uh, they love when I showed them this boat mm -hmm. this morning. They come in uh, a couple of hours a week building boats out of wood. Um, Debbie, you might know Debbie. The skip building and road project is the main thing uh, in, in Fabsham Creek now. It's been wonderful to watch it grow and grow and grow. Um, this project deserves all we can give it. Um, let's see what happens now with this button. That's Carol and Chris. It moves. Let's stop gap animation. <laughs> So um, <clears throat> there's our youngest member out there, school children. Some of them are doing that at Duke Open Rewards. Uh, they're uh, 12, 14, 15, I think. Um, and they, they all do 
Now, it's scary for me because I'm about to go around perfectionist, but it's just like, no, you do it. And so that's what they do and make mistakes. But it's, you know, they all float. Uh, but they're wooden traditional boats. Um, another peril. Um, last, this time last year, I had no idea that come August, I would be rowing on the creek with four complete strangers and absolutely loving the experience. Subsequently, I feel very proud and privileged to have become a member of the wonderfully inclusive Singforce Rowing uh, boat building community, making new friends, learning to row, and looking forward in anticipation to the social rowing sessions. Having lived here in Fabishes since 1981, it is so good at last to see the creek being used and enjoyed by those young and old and the opportunities offered to build and row a boat with no disability or skill they can't acquire. Uh, you'll see there. Now, this really gets me. Yeah, he, Lee was, he was speaking out, wasn't he? Okay. This really gets me. We are in a position where we've got to uh, find new homes, big side homes for our beautiful boats. Uh, what well, they were, um, uh, Fran and Peter have been keeping them for five years, these boats, uh, these in the last three years. Um, but then we can't keep them out anymore. There's uh, TS Hazard building on the right. There's uh, Swan Key with a slip and a boat shed and a uh, uh, sail. All fenced off. Why? So it runs into the ground so they can get that planning permission through to build more houses to make I yet think more. We could just go on to that. Okay. 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 So there's opportunities there. Um, but there are plenty of places quick side that could be used and perhaps with your persuasion uh, and influence we could use them um, community they're just absolutely loving it we went to uh, norwich uh, in december i thought they'd be able to pack up over the winter but they don't want to keep coming back uh, and um, so uh, i wanted to say i said about peter and fran and, and the support and goodwill there is in the town um, and moving on. Could you sum up that you're on 15 minutes? Am I? Yeah. So young people, um, I'll go up to there and come up to the last slide, which is, um, so we need the place near the creek. Uh, we've got um, uh, Beerman Western. We've got uh, Town Jetty. We've got Shepherd Mead. We want to produce, uh, provide adaptive growing for disabled people. We want funding to enable the long term future uh, with additional benefits such as training, skills, opportunities, and employment. This attracts tourists. It's a spectator and participant events. We're planning for the, to celebrate the King's coronation, another Skippy Fest in May 6, 7, and 8. We had 14 teams enter from the town last year, and we are and this is the last thing, World Skipping Championship in 2025. We're going to build and we're going to enter teams from all age categories, under 80s, right up to the over 70s. OK, so your support would be much appreciated. So that this project outlast me and in a, I was asked how long will these boats last? There's no reason why they can't be here in, in 100 years time. Need your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very fun to talk to Are there any questions um, or anything anyone wants to note for Alan? Yes, that's the uh, projection. Yes, I've not made a boat, but I have wrote it. Not prior to I did it, along with Alison. <laughs> uh, um, Whitey Crescent, I was over there last week, and the man in Devon just moved in. He didn't even realise that he had a running club, so I told him. Um, I wish you every success and I think it's really good what you're doing and people in the um, purifier come down there, I've gone in there and seen them making the bubbles, etc. And still the launching the thing at McDonald's, which I thought was another good tribute to a really great person at the town. You of course all every one of you is welcome to come down to the workshop and to come running. We do test uh, 
You'll absolutely love it. Wear a thick coat because he doesn't put the heating on. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get the Councillor. Yeah, so, so you, you, you need some form of support funding, I presume, financially. What's all your, what is it you're actually looking for? What, what's it sounds like that was dead now. <laughs> uh, what, what actually is your sort of running cost? What, what will make a difference for you? Well, uh, the, the running, there's nobody on a, on a proper salary here at all. Um, if we want it to continue, we would, we need to keep people. Um, in, in, to to run it. If, uh, if someone was to take a me, if I retire, um, which I'd like to do at some point, um, then we need to have somebody trained up to do that. You can't just have people just come along uh, without any kind of direction. We would like to do adaptive rowing for the disabled. We need uh, about twenty-five thousand pounds to fund that. Um, we'd also like a clubhouse, please, um, because it's a social thing, it's, it's off the water as well. Um, and I mean, we're talking big money, but there's, there's a space allocated alongside the creek uh, in the basin, which hopefully is going to be um, come alive with swing bridge and so on. But we, we don't need a swing bridge ourselves. But there's going to be, if, if it's approved, housing uh, for Fiona and Western. And part of that is allocated for community use because um, um, John Lieber has, has said that's what he wants to do for the community. So we could use that line now and you know, we could get funding to, to build a boathouse or clubhouse, you know, we could do that now. It's like that picture there, it's just lying dull dormant, not happening. It's no good having plans for the future we can, we've got a need, we've got a waiting list now, people who want to join. Um, so, you know, we could do it now rather than seeing bar bar fences with land, which would be just perfect. Why can't we do it? Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who has questions? No. Well, so I suppose the point there is that the Labour plan has not gone to referendum yet. It's gone through the regulation of the Clearly, you're stating outright that support for the management plan is the way forward to get this facility, which I'm not going to disagree with. I'll wait until I've seen the final plan to, to make a decision on um, In terms of the land that was there, we can't force a landowner to do something with their land. The, the curious, you can't turn around and say to, I couldn't turn around to Council Bell and say, I want you to convert your house into a house of multiple occupancy tomorrow and put homeless people. I can't do it. It would be wrong for a start for me to do so. And we can't do that to those landowners, though we might want to do to make changes. Perhaps there is a possibility around here sometime in the future, but that's a building that's going to be an awful lot of investment. An awful lot. Let's face it, structurally, there's a question mark. So, full support, yeah. we have to be realistic around how we get there. Um, Believe me, uh, there's something that I didn't believe from my past council many years ago when he said to me that the most frustrating thing you'll find being on a council is that it will take you years to do this. If you can get stuff done quicker as a school governor than you can as a councillor, we can right with certain things, particularly when it's infrastructure for the community. It's fully behind yet, you've just got to find the right way to get there and ain't asking for patience, but be patient, and we'll get there. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be patient uh, because I, I, will, I will put forward ideas that don't depend upon uh, landowners. So uh, I know that we could have a floating pontoon built with a boat house on it and we'll put it in the basin and uh, Lady Sons will say, yeah, that's fine. So we might have, you know, but it would be great if we would have the support of uh, Jonathan Lane or John Cleaver or Hilary Redman or for these landowners uh, and the town council and, and so on to use uh, various facilities. Uh, because the opposite of the benefits are huge and immense, and we need a bit of encouragement uh, to do that. I think um, also what Councillor Jackson was saying about new people coming and not knowing about it. Um, all of us here tonight know a lot of people, we've got members of the public, 
uh, online and in the public gallery there. If we could all spread the word of what you're doing, um, who knows, it could self-fund in some ways as well, the bigger your membership if you get up to strike full membership. Who knows? But thank you very much for coming tonight. And I think we're all in support of you and uh, thank you for what you do. It is a great community project. Uh, it is fantastic what it does uh, for people for their mental health and their physical health. And um, spread the word and um, get more people coming to see you. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Uh, are there any proposals that we can formally put? Not at this meeting. Not at this but meeting. Not for, you know, what financial proposals you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, um, if, we, if we had some guidance on, on ways forward, that would be The officers, we could get some officers. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on. We've got agenda item eight, which is matters arising. Number one is the bus consultation project, uh, which I will hand over to Janet. Um, yes, so you'll you'll see um, the latest update. The economic development support officer has provided. Um, but just to add to that, he spoke to me just as I was leaving for this meeting to say that uh, the questions for the survey are now ready and he'll be circulating those to the committee members shortly um, before going ahead uh, to make the survey live. Um, so that, that's the only extra update on that. Okay. And then moving on to the flooding in Livingston Road areas and other parts of Faversham. Um, Councillor Saunders has updated you with it up to December. I've been chasing all agencies um, to get an up to date, and I can read you the one I've got from KCC yesterday and the one I've got from Southern Water at eight minutes past five today. Uh, it's been a bit, I've been chasing, but I've only just got the responses. So the one from KCC was that um, the officers have produced a plan for some further improvement on Whitstable Road itself on the side of the road opposite properties uh, where uh, it runs along the way. Um, I've sent the plans to Southern Water for their review as these drains link to the surface water sewers. The plan also includes additional two drains on the property side of Whitstable Road to supplement the curved drain. This would form a first phase of work and would we would hope to deliver as soon as we have comments from Southern Water and road space becomes available. There is more work to do in detailing up works. Alex, if the officer, is proposing to complete the above works <coughs> first as this can be delivered quicker. Park Road would involve a new soakaway within the recreation ground in order to drain the runoff coming down Park Road. So there is going to be a soap away in the wreck. I don't know if people saw that they did. They dug a big hole um, to make sure that it, it would take the runaway uh, water, and it would. Um, so Swellborough Council um, have sent in more um, street sweepers regularly to keep the debris clear of the road, because what's happening is water and debris are coming into the road, blocking up the beanie drains, and so then the water can't get away. So Swellborough Council are clearing the roads, and they are clearing the roads regularly. That has been noted by the residents. Uh, and I also have noted that um, Southern Water have been clearing the drains as well because there was a lot of uh, oil down the drain. So they have been there on regular, um, quite regular. Uh, but the, what I've got from, thank you, Southern Water, let's hear somewhere. Uh, Eight minutes past five when I've been chasing for days. Um, she said that we have carried out routine maintenance and cleaning since November 2020 and there's another clean on the main foul sewer in the system ready to be carried out. There are two uh, manhole covered replacements work scheduled for March and it is because we got a mail out saying on the 21st of March Cypress Road will be closed between 7 p.m and 5am um, the next day, so that is scheduled to be done. On February the 5th, there was a sewage spill on Whitstable Road, uh, which was caused by rags, sanitary towels and wet wipes and the blockage in Abbey Fields. You're already aware that we have a pollution incident on November the 25th at the side of Cooksfit Stream. This was due to a build-up of fat and wipes 
on the SO5A lateral drain in the Queen Elizabeth School. So that's um, a work order has been raised to try to create a better gradient for flow from the school, which will reduce the risk of fat building up. Alongside this, our NEPO network enforcement and protection officer has been to visit the school and given advice and warnings to the catering team about disposal of fats, oils and grease and advise them to fit appropriate grease management. There are currently nine sewer manhole sensors in Whitsmore Road and Cypress Road. We're still looking for the installation of a manhole camera. There's another water uh, company trialling a piece of equipment and we're um, exploring the viability of this. I will be getting back to Southern Water because they've been saying historically that they did have this camera being made for them, but now they're saying that it's not in production, it's actually being used by someone else and they're going to see how it happens. So that is where we are so far. So there's been a lot of um, agencies working together. There's been a lot of progress, but we're still not there. Um, but I think uh, Swellborough Council are doing what they can to keep the roads clean, stop the blocking of, of the drains. There's still work to be done in the REC, which um, KCC say they're going to do, but they then need to talk to Southern Water. So you can see it is what it has been since March last year when, this, when I started on this, is that trying to get the agencies to work together. So that's where we were eight minutes past five. Um, but I will be following this up um, to get a proper update um, and people together again. <laughs> it's been left for a few months and it seems to um, get back to where it was and waiting for each other, which I don't think is very good. So that's where we are on that. Right, freshwater leaks. Um, Councillor Saunders, could you update us on this, please? Um, well, I think that's still where we, we are as reported here. I, I, I did, after the last meeting, I did write up to South East Water again to remind them that it's um, like it's not written before, but they haven't responded. I'd like to add something to that because obviously I wasn't at this meeting, but. Um, Mr Baines is here tonight, um, which you'll have a chance to speak at the public, if I could just say. There is a water, there has been a water leak in Westgate Road at the junction with Whitstable Road for a considerable amount of time. I have reported it many times. I think Mr Baines has as well. But it's, um, I think it's South, South East Water that does the water in. Um, and that's coming up and then draining back in with dirty water. And the road, it's also coming up and freezing over with the bad, the bad weather. So I'd like that noted, um, if you can. That's all this, yes. Um, That's a bonus. Thanks. Um, for information, we just could kind of play a bit something on this topic. Um, I had the joys of phoning, I think, South East Ward. We've got two more at leak from Station Road and Tenant at the moment. It's literally on the junction of Station Road, the Honeyball Wall, in the middle of the rugs. So when they get to repair it, it's going to be problematic for them. But it is flowing a nice sort of stream constantly down Station Road and onto the low road now. And the best response that South East Water could give us was we might get somebody out there in five days. There is going to be thousands of litres of water mm. wasted because mm. of this. Previously on the low road up by the Crescent Tenant ten before Christmas, there was a leak there which took them months to deal with. There just does not seem any urgency from the water companies to look at this at all. And I think any pressure we can do, no pun intended about pressure, um, on the to actually get their act together and come down and, and provide the service to the residents which we pay for, the better. Absolutely. Councillor Martin? I, I would concur, but we do have to look at other agencies as well. So, for example, we had a leak on the Ashford Road recently, which South East Water could not repair until such time as they had permission from KCC. Road. And KCC couldn't get permission to close Ashford Road all the time the diversion, which is selling road, was closed for part of the So instantaneously, you're building in another week. 
and that's happened in other areas. No doubt the repetitive drains from Southern Water on Westgate, oh no, Cypress Road, is the reason why they can't fix them on Westgate. Um, it's quite often the case, and I get it I got work as well, so you get the, the wording, we can't fix the link that's just the other side of the water meter for that tower because we can't get permission from the council to close it for another two months. But it's the other side of the water meter, so that's fine, you can pay it Very nice for the water company when it's that side. So we have to bear that in mind. We also have to look at our own response. So when the leaks are repaired, but we are making sure that street cleansing is happening afterwards. Because one of the byproducts of the is that you end up with one month in the city and all the rest of it on the roads. And generally it ends up on the pavement. And let's face it, no one wants to get to the train station if they're sick covered in mud at the back. So we do need to make sure once we've seen those replaces done, we get our teams out to clean that part of it. That's the first thing. I'd just wanted to um, suggest to people that um, South East Water have got like quite a handy little map that you can see where all of the reports are. Um, and if you press on them, they give you an option to like have a text message when they've sent someone out and they've done something, they've updated it. So obviously that's when fix, fixing any of the problems itself, but it's helpful to like know where, where they are. Um, Whitstable Road has got one which has been flagged as by Bob Angle Close, so I don't know if that's the same one um, that you were talking about, Chair, but it's, it's just handy. They send yeah. really emails that keep you up to date. So where's that? Is it an app? Yeah, it's, well, it's just on their website. Oh, okay. it's the South East Water Website. Yeah. 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 Ye
because it means they've got to spend money to enlarge service, but greater service and greater capacity. Now, we've lived with this problem, and I can feel from the people who currently live on the Whipstable Road, because three new houses were built there, and as soon as they move in, what happens? You get a rainstorm intensity of between 20 and 30 millimetres in a short period of time. And what happens? The highway floods up, almost coming in those people's doorways. It isn't going to get any better. It isn't going away. All these proposals, KCCs, going out there off the direct, putting investigation boreholes down to see if the ground suit will soak away, are squandering great players money because it isn't going to work, because the problem is about the capacity of the sewer in Farishton. Now, this is a problem that is now being compounded because of all the new housing. Because I've spent the best part of 30 years looking into the sewers of this town, and I can tell you now, there are two main sewers in this town, Abbey Street and Cypress Road. So the town's basically divided up. You've got Everything that's to the west of the creek goes down Abbey Street. Everything that's to the east of the creek comes down Whitstable Road and Cypress Road. And that's where the problem of the high polygon loading is. And until that's resolved, then there's going to be flooding. Now, just to go back in time, we had a problem in Cypress Road because Swale Council allowed houses to be built that would be, that would be below highway level. There were, that's the housing that was built by Water Construction, numbers 48 to 91, approximately 1980. As soon as the people moved in, those houses flooded because of hydraulic overloading. That problem went on until flooding, serious flooding in 1992, 1993. They finally did something about it because I kicked them up the arse, excuse my French. And what, what did they do? They put in the Cypress Road Flood Relief Scheme, which is a very large diameter sewer that runs down through the school playing field of the Queens of the school. What that does, it bleeds off the surplus flow that would otherwise flood our houses. So since they put that in, we no longer flood in Cypress Road. But the problem is, there's a thing called a combined sewer overflow at the junction of Cypress Road Whitstable Road, and that combined sewer overflow is effectively a choke point on the system. What that means is that with all the additional foul flows and the rainstorm flows that happen, then it, it backs up from, from the Whitstable Road effectively. And I think people who live locally will have seen that because these flooding incidents on the Whitstable Road have been getting worse and worse. And it's only going to get worse and worse because they're allowing more houses to be built. I actually challenged the former head of the planning department of Swale, Mr. Freeman, he's no longer there. And he told me there's nothing we can do about stopping housing because of inadequate foul storage. He said we have to allow it to happen. Basically, the system is fixed. It, it just stinks of, to be quite honest, it stinks of corruption. So in other words, Southern Water can just do what they want. They can say, yeah, we'll take all these houses on, we'll allow all this flow to come into, you know, to come into the drain so we can transfer it to be cleaned up. But they actually not, they're actually lying to us because they cannot take the flow in the sewers. On a day like this, very little rain, they can take the flow, but when it rains heavily, they can't take the flow. And that is a problem that has been ongoing. It hasn't gone away. And I just come here and hear all this, and it's just constant disappointment. Why aren't Southern Water here? You, Swale Council, you should be engaged. Well, we have been. We have been. We've had, Swale, we've had Southern Water, we've had KCC at yeah. previous meetings. I haven't been here as a chair for a few uh, meetings, and I'm just giving an update of where we are so far okay, and then we will be going back to them after this meeting after we've heard from members of the public so can i thank you for okay. what you've had to say sorry can i sorry can i just say one thing i just want everyone here to know this. as long as it's not making accusations so, about anything no, 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 that's no, 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 thing to do here right every time a whipstable road flats up that isn't rainwater it's rainwater 
diluted with foul sewage. It's a public health scandal. So every time it rains, I've seen people actually wading through that water. Kids and that may think it's a game. It's 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 just disgusting. But in this day and age, we can't solve problems like this out. Where is the problem? Unfortunately, it's with southern water. Yeah. They need bringing here by the yeah, but they, will, they have been bought here and we will be getting so why back they, Sorry, sorry, just let me say this. Why haven't they come up with an answer? Why are they just saying to you spoken mirrors? This is like, no, what this, the problem is. Mr. Tocco, Mr. Tocco, I've had many meetings with you at uh, the town and here, so I know your views. I get many emails from you. It's all been noticed what you said tonight and we will be getting back in, in touch with Southern Water. We can't fight the corner, they're not here, so I can't give you answers for them. I, last email I got was eight minutes past five tonight. I was frustrated as you. So can we now go to um, Theresa Metcalf, okay, please? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Is carried on to the agenda for the next meeting, and um, if we can still have another follow up and maybe try and pin them down to dates of when they are going to start doing something. Well, absolutely. I mean, I will now, now that I've got, well, I was hoping the update was going to be much better than what it was. They made me wait till eight minutes past five, so I'm as frustrated as you because there's nothing I could do about it then. I will certainly in the morning be getting back in touch with them because it conflicts with other emails I've had. Um, I will be getting back with KCC2 and um, I will be getting, we've got your email so we can still do updates because obviously this is the very last meeting I will chair um, and the next area committee will be by other councillors because we don't know who's going to be voted in. But I will certainly, before I leave, um, push to get a better update than what I've got. Uh, I've got a good relationship with the officers so the officers of KCC, I've met them on site. They don't lie to me. I do believe that they're doing the best. Hook's ditch drain was blocked. I saw it for myself. So the flooding we had on Whitstable Road was because it couldn't leave Whitstable Road because the drain was completely blocked. I saw the camera go down in. It now does go into Cook's ditch. So we are getting there. We're getting more cleaning by Swellborough Council. So all these things are not enough. I know they're not enough, but they are helping. Um, it is better, and I'm sure you admit it's not coming up to the front doors. But it, unless they keep up with all what they're doing, the cleaning out of the sewers with where it's got, I'll come to you, where um, it's been blocked with sanitary towels, this is going to happen. This is going to be an ongoing sorry, sorry, thing. No, I'm talking at the moment. No, I'm talking at the moment. Um, it's going to be an ongoing thing, which we do need to keep the pressure on. So I hope going forward, the pressure will be kept on by the next area committee. Uh, and I hope to have a better update for you um, as soon as I can talk to them. Sorry, just two things. Can, now, can I just go to... Uh, uh, Colin, I'm going to be as well. I just want to add my thanks to the councillors who have been um, working to try and resolve uh, or get some answers on what we this problem. I just think it's also important to emphasise, again, this isn't just about people's hopes uh, and danger of flooding. Um, when Whistable Road floods, the centre of the town is cut off. Mm -hmm. um, vehicles can't get through. Fire engines and ambulances can't get through. Um, you know, to the point that it's not just dirty children of the rainwater, it is sewage as well that is easily coming there. Um, but of course, that presents a risk because uh, that's the only, as I believe, from that side of the town, it's the only um, uh, access route into the town centre which isn't restricted by the, the height. For example, again, only because they have to go onto the, the, the railway bridge and so on. Um, so, so for anything up to an hour to time, we, we've seen the, 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 the road completely blocked in both, both directions. So this is an issue which is not just about residents, not just about homes, it's actually about um, safety for many, many people in the centre of parish. Um, thank you, sir. Just from what I've been hearing, and because I don't live on those bits of I'm on the tent, but I'm just wondering, it troubles me when they hear that it's one of the things that's causing blockages, for example, a sanitary tower where people are putting fat and oil still down into their drums. Have we, and if we haven't, could we 
that's not our responsibility because it probably should be with the southern border or whoever. But is there an education piece where we can actually go and just lay it flat out and say, this is being blocked. And one of the reasons is because of this, that we are blocking it ourselves by throwing these things down into the into the surface. And if, if they, could we send something around to, to the addresses in that area? Just to highlight that, and then if it helps, it will really help. And that's certainly something I could um, report back to Southern Water, asking them to do an education leaflet it would help them, wouldn't it, if people didn't do these things? It would certainly help them because one of the things they've assured me is they will do regular cleaning and they have been doing something regular. There have been people there. Uh, it's not enough. So I, I will get back in touch with them and I will get an update for everybody um, who, who wants to know. Can I just go to just Councillor Marvin? Yeah. If, if the response then is that it's going to take six months or like that, is there a way which we might be able to do something ourselves through so just print off letters and if they need to pick it through this hey, come and take a few weeks time we should be knocking on doors it would take that much after to put a, an eight four letter through people's letter boxes <laughs> as, a, as a suggestion yeah, um, yeah that's that's something we could do and um, all the water companies have resources or like they have regular campaign that they say that really hard to address these issues um so but yeah just because we then work with them to see what we can do with not to out so we can get something out okay so i'll take in a comment for you just because i don't like having too much of the last few months we have we have we have inside swine so we want to produce generic materials we can put a page if I have the week as a committee could recommend the page go to the next inside slide. It could do things after that, and possibly even the back page. Mm. Yeah. When we um, tend to put out information about what not, not what not to put in the blue bin, um, so we often do send out um, information for sending out to the side as well. So let's see. One of, can I just go to? I'll come to you in a second. Can I just go to Mr. Baines, please? So if you could just say who you are, where you come from. My name is Prince, that's just a historian from the Swan Road. Two things I've been enjoying for a long time. One thing is, beginning of the best year tour, from this world of the best year tour, there's a new going on from TVS and TVS and TVS. Not the big leap, just little leap. It's keep coming, water keep coming. Out. And after the rain comes, the waters stand up of that. So that means the leaf, water is coming out from there, water can go back in as well. So therefore, I don't know, there's clean water, must be clean water, for example, there is something else in it. So people are drinking that water. Which is, how many people are drinking that water? There's not good for that. Secondly, my taps, when we open the water, the taps are closed after one month, two months, I have to clean it. So the water is not clean. It has come to my house. It's called through to Fourth Street, where the water goes to. One thing at least, I would like to be the best of you, please. Something can be done. We don't want to drink it out of the water. We don't want to drink it unclean water. And that water should be clean for the public. Secondly, our sellers on the main road. We are there for the last 10 years. Four, five or six times the sailors has been full up with the boat rack. There's a block there. When something comes out for drain block, that I don't know how they should become come out. Then my sailors full up five or six times last 10 years with a dirty boat. It's not clean water, there's a dirty, dirty boat. So they come to clean it, they don't clean it, but Last time we said, no, this is not our job. So first thing, why the water coming back to me? When they were the one there, they said to me, there's no more coming back. But it was still coming. Then they said, we got a big block is on the front, so water come back. But that thing should be stopped. It should be asked. You cannot stand in the storm. 
Ms. Baines, can I ask you a question? Your um, basement, is it a habitable basement or is it storage for your goods? Well, I'm using it for the storage lab. Right. Because we put the two holes there, then you won't come. Yeah. Well, but I know that they have two companies. They have um, stronger legislation. I think probably you would know that um, if it's coming into a place where people live, then they have to sort it out because people obviously have drowned before. So the, the basement you're talking about is the storage for your shop at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, at this moment we're yeah. using that. Yes. We got a two pump. We got a two pump there. Two hole there. Two pump there. Yeah. Three hole there. Right, hey, can I just ask one question? Has Mr. Bain got a manhole? Have you got a manhole in the basement? Well, a manhole cover. Have you got a manhole cover? Uh, a big manhole. Yes, a big one. There was southern water coming and lift the cover and clear it out. They're not. They're coming out, they've never seen anything. Right, can I just say, again, it's the same problem. It's to do with the hydraulic, the loading. Yeah, we have noted that. Yeah, and well, that's good. No, there. Sorry, but. Because the more you look at this, the more you see what the problem is. Somebody's got, you know, I don't know why every, everyone in Swale Council tries to hold southern water that kind of arms length and going to the No, I just don't, you have, this is the first, with due respect, this is the first area committee you've been to. Um, I have been reporting back to you from other area committees. We're not holding them at arm's length at all. We're trying to but make them fully. Because this is my first one back. For a few months and I was just trying to collate all the information before I could pull everyone together again like I did before where I had KCC um, and I, I had KCC, reps from KCC officers and members, uh, Swell Borough Council from their teams, I had everyone in attendance for a few meetings so we have been there so um, I think it's a bit unfair that you come here and say that we've never haven't done anything. I personally, and with Councillor Saunders, have been working on this since March, and we have made a lot of headway. We're not there. I'm not saying we're there yet. So we certainly aren't. You've seen the replies. So we will keep on going. But we've worked really hard to get to where we are. We've unblocked one drain that went into Cook's Ditch. Um, we've got more drains being promised by KCC. I can only, I can only, I, I can only feed back to you. I can, only, I can only feed back to you what the information I've got to date, and I will feed back to you as soon as I get any more information. Like you're saying it's all fine and equitable, and I understand what you and Swale Council are doing, but all these things are just are minor things in the scheme of things. This is about failure of southern water to provide adequate sewers. Of adequate capacity. Uh, yeah, I agree. And Mr. Taylor, you've been, you've, been, you've been campaigning for 30 years. Yeah. And in the last year, we have, as a council, as a committee, have worked really hard. So you're standing there saying nothing's been done for 30 years. In the past year, we have worked hard. Well, it, uh, and as actually, a council and as a committee. It's just been the fault to get worse. It's one final thing, and then well, I'll. No, can I just go to. Can you just ask, can I, I, so if someone asks them about what I'm doing in deal, project part. No, I've got that. I have got that email from you, Clegg. We got that last night. She counts the bones. Just to help verify the comment you, the gentleman's just made. At the Borough Council, correctly, the Chief Executive, correct me wrong. We do not have the powers to say, "Some water, you must come before us." We can't do that. No. We can invite them, yeah. and we invited them many, many times over the years. It's their choice whether they come or not come. Right. We can't force them. No, we must, you know, to. So what's at fault is the system. The system that allows a company like Southern Water to act like the mafia, because that's what you're dealing with. Yeah. What, Mr. Taylor, no, 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 Mr. Taylor, I'm going on to uh, Councillor Gould, please, and then I'll go on to Councillor Gould, because we've got to wrap this meeting up. Um, yeah, Councillor Gould, please. I mean, just, just to say that we are aware that the system is is not what it should be, and and there was a motion passed at the moment at a recent council meeting, pointing this out, uh, and trying to uh, ask the leader and to bring as much pressure on government to change some of the systems that means that the what Mr. Freeman told you about the um, housing uh, not being 
stoppable by there not being enough infrastructure for the sewers is actually I'm afraid that is what the case is at the moment. We would like to see that changed and have asked um, for that sort of change to take place. So that pressure is being exerted as far as we can. But as Councillor Bowen says, our powers are limited um, and you know, we can do what we can. We're running over our 20 minutes, so and I've got two members who wish to speak. So, Councillor Saunders, please, and then Councillor Whiting, and then we need to wrap this up. Councillor Saunders, please. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I have a lot of sympathy with Ms. Taylor's argument because I think there's two, there's two aspects here. I think we have made progress as an area committee in sorting out some of the, the immediate. Um, pressing issues and a lot of works and, um, and there's, there's been, you know, there has been engagement with Southern Water, uh, there's been the involvement of the MP, there's been good involvement from, from KCC. But the underlying problem is is this combined sewer system. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's a good idea for Councillor Bowen to have an education campaign, but the, re the reason that raw sewage is you know, getting into uh, the drainage system is because of the anti-quality combined sewer system and it's not just a problem with Whistler Road, it's a problem uh, certainly in my, my ward as, as, as well around uh, Tanner Street and there, there have been residents that uh, have raw sewage coming into, into their houses. So yeah I think as council we have started to try and hold um, a southern water to account we met with them. They did. They did kind of identify a capital program. I think we now need to work hard to, to find out what's happening with that capital program and you know what actions they're going to actually take um, to improve the combined service system in fashion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Yeah, I'm just going to. I, I agree. Thank totally I agree totally with that. Um, we do need to understand what they're. Um, uh, what the ethical programming is moving forward, yeah. and not just in function, but elsewhere in Israel, and so that when these housing developments are pushing at the door all the time, um, and then larger ones, some of them come on stream, uh, that we have some confidence that the capital programs that are being put in place are going to be able to cope with that um, and not exacerbate the issue. Other water do have a legal responsibility to take away foul sewage. Um, that's their responsibility. And, while they can't veto housing um, applications at the planning stage, they still have that responsibility to ensure that those houses are going to be able to into it safely and not flood people's front garden. So we need to ensure one from you know our MPs to ensure that we are holding their feet to the fire. So I in, in, that, in um, doing that. Um, but I, I totally agree with uh, Councillor Saunders that we should be looking and investigating their capital program and satisfying ourselves. As a, as a planning authority, if nothing else, um, that, that it's going to be adequate in the, in the years uh, years to come. So everything that's been said tonight will be put into a letter uh, and sent to them and to KCC um, to find out exactly what is going to happen. Um, and everything noted about what you've said. So I appreciate the residents coming here tonight um, uh, and that will be noted and put into them. So going on now to Agenda item 10 with the local issue issues to be raised. Are there any members that would like to raise anything on behalf of the local residents or community? Councillor Jackson. Um, yeah, yes, I was being moved in fashion because I've got a lot of complaints of doing the field um records and social behaviour. I did report to the caucuses when they were meeting on Thursday at the Alexander Centre here. And I gave the address of a certain resident, and um, so far I don't think there's been any improvement there at all. So I wonder if our community team get in touch with them. Okay, that's been noted. Uh, Councillor Martin? Yeah, just to point out that uh, yet again, uh, this evening, some of you may have noticed coming into town uh, that there was an incident in Fort Road Crossing once again, and the street has yet again been on Fort Road Crossing. This is despite planned improvements to that crossing, which were delayed by the county council until the next financial year. year. Despite warnings from myself and council, the council promised to be back. It was only a matter of time. 
before we had yet another incident. Um, I hate when we blue light on something like this. It's absolutely despicable. I understand the individual is okay. I think it's okay, it can be. But it's yet again another highlight that we have to keep that pressure on when it comes to the active travel and ensuring that all of the crossing events are as safe as they can be. And that when works are agreed and planned, we hold them to the fire to our particular time frame. Um, it could have been a lot worse if it was someone who was a little bit shorter. So that would be. Just about three very quick, but hopefully, uh, on the, we had incidents yesterday, I think it was also the weekend, um, level crossing between Tenham and Fadersham. Um, with a car driving on the track. Um, not the first time this happened. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Um, the train swept was, uh, from what I understand, the signal and contact of the train driver, he slowed down to the stop. But if he hadn't, no doubt in my mind that would, could easily cause a derailment. Um, it's one of those little crossings which only has one gate inside, so you can actually illegally go around it. Um, so that's not the first time that's happened on this little crossing in the network rail further up the road. Uh, we, we have shut off a another crossing at the end of Seven Platform, which was a pedestrian crossing, which has had, in my opinion, no incidents uh, reported yeah. for many, many years, other than the fact that they say, had a couple of near misses. Yeah, for this one, they have a car driving on the track and they're going to do nothing about it. Um, so that, that's a bit of a double standard. Um, we have ongoing issues in Tenham uh, and it's swell for account of bin collections. Most weeks I'm getting someone somewhere in the in the ward saying they've not been collected and it has ranged from we haven't got enough staff, the bin was broken down, or in some occasions it's literally that they couldn't be bothered to go up to the road to go and collect it. Um, all due respect to Kelly and Alistair, brilliant. Every time I've contacted them, they've done something about it. But we should, it's such a regular thing now that it's beyond, beyond a joke. Um, and the fourth, third one has been a little bit cheap. Uh, uh, this is here. With the two presentations earlier uh, about the call and the, uh, the role, I was said about funding. What's the situation? Has all the um, area committee's funding been allocated? Yeah, because we has not 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 that no, not just ours, but across oh, the world. If there's anything yes. set, is there a way we could actually put we'll okay. Just one just I said bit too Um Mr. It's gone now. I think he wasn't in to today either. They didn't want to cite this road things and uh, so I got in touch with um, Scarborough Council and I immediately got a reply saying that the end uh, tomorrow. So it'd be like there's been Quite a few incidents recently. Not just when our weekend partners of Main Stair have been suffering quite a few incidents. The brass of brass. Doesn't make it easier by the way that I'm just intended about it. No. It's a weekly coverage. Anybody else? <laughs> no. So if we go to agenda item 11, was it matters referred to the area committee by service committees? And I don't believe there are any. Agenda item 12, matters referred to the service committee chairs for consideration. And is there? I don't think anything was. Um, Does the proposal put in? Is that but not? that, yeah, that's not going to committee. Yeah, that's for you to write a letter. So, I know to my understanding the reasons. Right. Okay. And then, any other business? Um, I'd like to read out uh, how we have acted as a shame that the public are gone, but. Uh, of examples of the Eastern Area Committee achievements uh, since the meeting on the 29th of September 2020. Many of the Area Care Committee's achievements were as a result of members, parish, town councils and members of the public identifying issues within the area which needed escalating either the Swellborough Council or other organisations. Some examples are listed below. There's paper copies if anyone wants to take through them tonight. Uh, highlighting the importance of defibrillators in public places being maintained and registered on relevant databases, 
specific antisocial behaviour problems were brought to the attention of the police and Swellborough Council Community Safety Unit to be monitored. No comment in. With a view to determining what wider action could be taken. Tackling the increasing incidents of flooding in the Faversham area by involving the local MP Helen Waitley who set up meetings with relevant agencies to identify an action plan. The area committee also liaised with Kent County Council, Southern Water and officers at Swellborough Council to ensure that plans were put in place to resolve this issue. The problems resulting from a change in the KCC travel side provider for pupils and special educational needs were raised with KCC cabinet maker and Carol Bones going on. The lengthy waiting list for families and children awaiting diagnosis for attention deficit hyperactive disorder and autism was raised with the KCC cabinet member. Eastern Area Committees operated a funding scheme and since September 2020 have allocated a total of £138,000 which was used to fund many projects run by local organisations which have benefited the whole of the Eastern area. They have focused on schemes that improve the appearance, environment and facilities of the area, along with contributing to Swell's strategic priorities. In the November 2022 funding round, the area committee decided to support interventions around the cost of living crisis. Examples of some of the schemes the Eastern Area Committee of Funding are Parish to Town projects to benefit all local residents by identifying good walking and cycling routes, linking Faversham and neighbouring communities, and producing a report with recommendations for a series of interventions to make walking and cycling on these routes easier and safer. To carry out a public consultation on a local bus service, the results to be used to influence KCC and local bus companies in uh, renewing and developing local bus services. Nearly there. We've done a lot. To purchase and install a new energy saving uh, pool pump at Babisham Pools, mobile youth projects to engage with young people in local neighbourhoods, contribute to it towards the CCTV system in Tenham, funding community warm spaces with food, family activities and advice, uh, along with outreach services and supporting the Faversham Salvation Army community wardrobe. So I think we've achieved a hell of a lot of the time we've been here. So congratulations to us. And I think we've done well for our community showing, I think that the area committees are working really well. So I'd like to thank the committee I'd like to thank the committee um, and the residents for their input because these committees are a platform for them to bring matters to the council's attention. So if everyone's OK, did you want to speak, Councillor? Uh, yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Chair. I know this is your last meeting. It is. Um, and I'd like to say thank you. Thank you. Uh, a new, a chair into a new position, into a new role is never, never easy. Um, and I, 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 I thoroughly enjoyed your chair. I think you've done an excellent job as chair. Thank you. Uh, I hope you have accepted your place as an equally good as you are. Um, but I always find, I hope to be fair, you will be missed, and I wish you very, very best to life in the future, wherever it goes. Thank you very uh, much. Well done. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you all for coming to these meetings and engaging with you and for all the work you've achieved. and. Especially thank you to Councillor Saunders, who's been a marvellous vice to me, and I couldn't have done it without you. Behind every successful woman, <laughs> I'd like to close the meeting at 21 12. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wish you all luck in the elections if it's standing. Thank you.